All right, what's up everyone? Hope everyone's having a uh, fantastic start to their week. Uh, I'm doing pretty well, uh, but aside from that, we got some pretty outstanding news. If you guys haven't kept an eye on the precious metals market, it's taking off. And it's probably be going to be because of the way silver and gold is performing right now that it might actually save not only the coin market in general, uh, which I, I didn't think it really needed saving due to the pandemic, um, but coin dealers are going to be in a really good spot, okay? Much like they were back in 2008 to 2011, 12, that general area. I'm going to get to why that's the case and what that correlation really means to the PM market, uh, to the coin dealer situation. Um, there's a lot of places not open right now, okay? States are shutting down or they're, um, they're, they're curbing down, you know, the, the type of businesses that can operate during these crazy times. Um, but coin dealers are kind of in a different spot and uh, when we take a look at the uh, the framework of the, the unemployment situation that's going on right now um, that kind of plays a little bit of a role into why precious metals is performing so well and that's why you know whether they're open or closed coin dealers are kind of benefiting from everything that's going on if someone needs cash you know, they're going to go out and they're going to sell all the silver that they can um, to make ends meet, okay? And then that's a give coin dealers the opportunity to buy low, sell high. All right, that's just the way they operate. Same with any other place that buys, sell, trades, items. Um, you know, they, there's obviously a bottom number, and then there's a lot of profit, and there's that retail number that um, uh, gets presented to the buying public. Um so what I want to do is kind of like a, a makeshift market minute is to uh, go ahead and let's examine the precious metals market as of this morning, July 21st. All right, so we're on coinflation.com. It's kind of like my easiest go-to just to do, you know, do a quick check in with the market and see where we're at. But as of right now, silver is up $1.12, keeping in mind about... 16 hours ago, we were under $20. I think we were at like $19.96. Um, we're already beginning to see just massive um, amounts of trades going on, whether it's in physical form, which is, you know, if you had it, if you're holding it in your hand and you need to get rid of it, that's what they call physical PM or bullion, um, which to a lot of people that means the most. People like things that are tangible. They could touch it, see it, smell it, and everything like that. And then there's also kind of like the ETF electronic side where you're trading paper stock in both of it, uh, both silver, gold, platinum, you know, whatever your flavor is. Um, but it, less than a day ago, we were under 20 bucks, and the, the talk was, ooh, are we really going to hit over $20, or are we going to see a little bit of pullback, you know, a little bit of um, profit-taking? And apparently that's not the case. Because not only did we blow past $20, we're all the way up over $21 an ounce for silver. All right, and then, uh, which by the way, I believe that's the highest price since 2015, um, if I read correctly. Uh, gold is blasting through some serious barriers here. It's up $23.30 to 1841 and 56 pennies, uh, which effectively makes this the highest... <laughs> Highest gold price since 2011. Yes, you heard that right. That's when we were knee deep in the recession, um, and the country was just in uh, recovery mode at that point. Um, PMs were crazy in 09 to 012. Um, is that correct? 012. But uh, <laughs> uh, but this is great stuff. All right, and we typically see run up in silver and gold uh, again you've heard this before it's a hedge against inflation right now we're feeling like not only are, are we 
seeing some inflation in the market in terms of just the total cost of goods. Even though there's a lot of people that are out of work right now, especially in the retail sector, um, there, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. And it, because there's so much economic uncertainty, even though the stock market hasn't really crashed, like we're not seeing a crazy like 25-30% correction in, in a small amount of time and then people are taking their money out of the stocks and they're parking it somewhere else. And then usually precious metals is uh, kind of like that go-to uh, flavor. So there's a lot of things going on. The economy, okay, isn't too hot. Retail is taking a beating right now. Um, maybe the restaurant ind industry and uh, small to medium businesses are getting clobbered. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of variables going on that kind of encompasses exactly where we're at in the nation. Okay, it, it's, it feels and looks a lot different, okay, uh, recession-wise compared to what we're dealing with now and what it was like in 2008 and 2009, okay, which, you know, the housing market crashed. Um, housing market right now is okay. You know, we've seen kind of like a 5% kind of drop, uh, maybe a little bit more in certain areas, uh, but not nearly hard as hit as what it was 12 years ago. All right, so that's where we're at as far as the market. Let's go ahead and check out Kitco, where we could and actually, actually it's jumped up to $1.18. All right, so we're still going up a little bit. We're up five, almost 6%. Um, but if we scroll down here, this is a very, very interesting kind of chart right here on the right. Um, so you can see just the, the, the percent change and in dollar form as well. I mean, 30, 30 days ago, we have gained $3.45 um, in price for silver, which is almost 20% up in six months. We're kind of like unchanged one year. Uh, we're up almost five bucks five years ago, which I would say is kind of like uh, the low point for silver. Uh, as you can see, it's just been hitting mid-teens for the longest time. Okay, it's been stagnant. Call it like a, a prolonged period of a time where probably you could have um, got some really phenomenal deals on PMs in the physical form. Again, stuff that you could hold and touch. Um, but things are changing. The, uh, the margins that coin dealers are going by to make money is starting to widen. All right. Um, I had done a video on how much coin dealers are paying you for coins and precious metals and things like that. Um, it, the information has kind of changed a little bit because we've seen almost a $2 rise in silver since that video. I believe we were just under $19 an ounce when we were talking about um, how much you would expect for your coins and currency. Uh, but the big thing that's changed is that coin dealers and th this is where I get into the um, the part of the video where I where I talk about how it's going to benefit coin dealers uh, more so than the actual general public who has nothing to do with uh, being a dealer at all in coins and precious metals is that their margins of profit are going to be much larger all right so as we see PMs continue to go up all right like I had mentioned Let's say on a, like this piece of silver right here is what I call a generic. Now, it's got a really pretty design on the front. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, Christmas 1973. These are available all over the place. But these right here, I had alluded into the video that coin dealers are paying you about 7% under what spot is for generics. All right. So that, that price might largen or tighten up a little bit. We might see 10%. Um, but where you're really going to get, uh, where you're really going to see less money for your silver is not scrap. Okay, whether you're selling 0.925 sterling or 80% like Canadian coins or even 90% US silver, all right? Uh, coin dealers were only paying nine to 10 times face. Okay, and it might stay that way. For the foreseeable future okay and, and the reason why that is is 
coin dealers or people that are in the industry of buying and selling PMs, they see run-ups like this, all right, as kind of a short-term deal, okay? So they're not going to change the amount of money that a dealer pays you for, let's say, if you had $10 face in silver, it would still be 9, 10 times face. Um, and price of silver could jump up to 25 bucks an ounce, and they would still, they would still pay you the same amount for your 90% scrap. Um, so how, how the, these dealers make money is, is that they make more money when silver is higher and then you get these huge jumps, all right? There's just much more room for profit. Um, and, it, you know, it, their inclination when you go to a coin dealer to sell silver is that they're going to tell you, well, you know, we can't pay on what it is right now because we're seeing very volatile price swings in the price of PMs. So as a precaution, we don't want to buy in at a much higher rate all right, if silver is going to drop 25% in, say, four weeks. Um, so that's their kind of rhyme or reason, and that's just the way of thinking. But in the meantime, as long as silver is performing, let's say it jumps up to $25 an ounce here in the next month or two, um, they're going to sell silver at $25 an ounce, okay? And then they're going to take into consideration how much a dollar's worth of 90% U.S. silver is going to be, they're going to take into consideration how much these are going to be because you remember, silver was like $17, $18 an ounce. But how much was it if you went to a coin dealer to buy one BU Silver Eagle, right? Which is, you know, the U.S.'s version of a generic silver triple nine fine one ouncer. Well, you would probably pay about $22 to $25 bucks an ounce anyways. So... There's always that big premium, and even on generics, okay, they usually have about a 2 to $3 premium on generic silver. All right, so as a seller, it's probably not in your best interest to sell at a coin dealer at this time. A lot of your big bets, let me go ahead and change the screen. It, it keeps refreshing every 30 seconds. It might be in your best interest to just go ahead and sell it online. Uh, I would probably kind of test the waters using some of the big precious metals dealers on the internet like Atmex um, and uh, Modern Coin Mart is another good one. There's a few of them out there. Uh, Silvertown with an E at the end. And uh, see what they pay you. They'll probably pay you a little bit more, all right? And then uh, they'll actually, I guess, pay for your shipping to uh, send it to them. Uh, but yeah, they, you know, I will say this much. Coin dealers deal, I would say, over 50% of their business in precious metals. Okay, and that's, that's why I'm saying that huge run-ups like this, like just that come out of nowhere, does them more good. All right, it, it, it's a perceived kind of like notion to the people. Silver is up to $21 an ounce. So we're going to go ahead and sell it. I think it's a good time to sell it because, gosh darn, we need the money. All right? You go to a coin shop and they, they kind of got you in a, you know, like a headlock. Like, hey, you know, we can only pay you 10 times face for this. Or on generics, you're like, oh, yeah, we're close. But we'd have to pay you 10% under spot for your generics. Um, so they're they're increasing their margin, their profit margin on, on their uh, silver and gold. Um the dealers that I've worked with uh, say they've done really well with PMs when the market is hot. Um, generally, the amount of money they make um, isn't something that they could retire off of, but you know, it, it, they would probably make about three to four times the amount of money on a PM run-up than they would with their numismatic coins. Okay, people that want coins, they come in and they ask for it. All right, and then sometimes they'll buy like a a statehood quarter for their album and only pay a dollar all right so um they they don't have a big profit margin on coins even on some they do um but aside from that precious metals because of the quick turn and just the volume is where it's at 
and then now all of a sudden we're we're seeing like uh, some huge huge gains in PMs. Uh, more so silver and gold. I haven't really checked in on platinum and palladium, and maybe even copper. Uh, those are industrial metals, but um, yeah, so is silver. But it, you know, we're still seeing manufacturing. But I think this is more a byproduct of uh, just what the market is doing, and uh, you know, the the competitiveness of the, um, the the economy and unemployment. You put them all together, and it's like, you know, it's right for the picking, right? This is something that I was anticipating about three months ago when stay-at-home orders were in effect throughout most of the country. Um, I, I kept talking to the people that I know. I'm like, silver is going to make a jump here pretty soon, okay? Uh, it actually dipped right around March 20th, okay, when a lot of things hit the fan. And I said, well, this is not going to be a temporary thing. And good luck. I think even dipped down to like $11, $12 an ounce. Good luck trying to find any inventory to buy in physical form. All right? Your best bet was to, at that time, buy the ETFs. And, um, you know, it's now we're seeing a completely different um, change. All right? But it was expected. If you got in and you are able to buy some physical silver... Back when it was like $15, $16 an ounce, good job. We were heading in the right direction. Some would say that silver is not a good investment at all because there's no kind of like compounding extra kind of ways to make money off of it, unlike traditional stocks and bonds and that sort of thing where there's like dividends and all that sort of wild stuff. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. When you go to a coin shop, don't be surprised if you hear that kind of talk track um, in relation to, uh, PMs and then, um, you know, do your due diligence. All right. If I were me, I would probably start trying to find ways to, uh, buy more silver because, um, th this is truly going to be another, um, uh, run up. I don't know if it's $55 worth of run up like it was 11 years ago. Um, but we could possibly see by the end of the year, probably 30 bucks an ounce. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. The run-up in PMs is way too reminiscent of what we would normally see. Maybe I should do this, right? So you can see my mug. Uh, this is what we would normally see during the holidays. Although last year we didn't see silver run-up too much. Maybe a dollar or so. Uh, but anyways, this is, uh, yeah, this is what we got for the market minute. So, yeah, silver over $20 an ounce. Gold at an all-time high. Since nine years, where are we at now? Are we are we heading in a direction where it's going to be just as crazy as it was back then? I don't know. Only time will tell, my coinaholics. Only time will tell. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Uh, sorry to keep it all rambly, but um, yeah, we got a lot to talk about in this one. Um, hopefully, you coin dealers out there is doing okay. If you're dabbling in PMs, let me know how it goes. Uh, but aside from that, guys, that's going to do it. So thank you for joining in on this one. You guys take care. Have a great day and be safe.